so much for visiting our channel. We are IFGF Los Angeles, and we are one church that meets in four campuses across Los Angeles. If you want more information on how to attend one of our services or how to get connected with our church, please visit ifgfla.com. This message was recently filmed in our Monrovia campus and features our executive pastor, Steffi Elia. We hope you are blessed. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's not too early for that, right? Yeah? But if you're not done with your Christmas shopping, you have like, what, 24 hours or less? But Merry Christmas. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to be back here, not Wednesday night. Uh, it's a Tuesday night on the 24th. We're going to be here from 7 to 8. So would like would really like for you to join us uh, one more time and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, we're in this series called Letting Go. Everybody say letting go. letting go. Letting go. I mean, we've been talking the last few weeks about letting go of stuff, letting go of distraction, letting go of bitterness. And today we're going to talk about letting go of control. Letting go of control. I know, it's a, it's a hot topic because we all want to be in control. Uh, if you bring your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 1. The book of Luke chapter 1. If you didn't bring your Bible, we have it up here. If you're here for the very first time, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are here. Would you please give, you know, people who are joining us this first time just a big round of applause one more time. Thank you so much. I know during this season, things can be very busy, but we're glad that you are here this morning. The book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to talk about two uh, characters around the birth of Jesus Christ. The first one is going to be Mary. Uh, verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed. Everybody say confused. Everybody say disturbed. Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Would you bow your head one more time with me? Jesus, we thank you for coming into this earth 2,000 years ago. Thank you that you went out of your way to seek and to save us. We were the one who got lost. We were the one who went astray. We were the one who left you. But Lord, you came for us. You came to redeem us. Thank you, Lord. What a good news. What a wonderful God you are, that you are willing to become one of us. You, the God of the universe, the King of all kings, the Lord of all, you were willing to be amongst us in order for you to save us. Thank you, God. Not only you saved us, but you also adopted us to be your children. You are a good father, and we know that you are the God who speaks. So this morning, we ask for you to, to speak clearly. We're ready to hear from you. We're ready to listen. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us. We are ready to hear from you. In your name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. 
How many of you would admit that you are a control freak? Only a few honest people. How many of you are married to one? I mean, don't lift up your hands. No. <laughs> Only a few honest people. But, you know, it, we don't like to admit it, but we're all control freaks. I mean, just look at some of these statements. If any of these statements resonate with you, you are a control freak. First one, I do things myself because no one can meet my expectations. As long as everything is exactly the way I want it, I am totally flexible. I adore spontaneity, providing it is carefully planned. And uh, my world will be so much better if everyone did what I said and let me make all of their decisions for them. How many of you are a control freak in this house? Yeah, a little more honest people. You know, we don't like to be called a control freak. You know, I'm not controlling. I'm just aggressively helpful. <laughs> I'm not a control freak. I just thoroughly organized. You know, Mary's situation was out of control. I mean, getting pregnant out of wedlock. I mean, she was a virgin. She never knew a man. Her world was falling apart. Not only a social stigma and the repercussions that she had to face, but it's just not convenient. I mean, it's not in her five-year goals to be pregnant before the wedding. She had no idea what's going on. I mean, being pregnant in your wedding gown, that's not nice. I mean, like, she paid an expensive price, a lot of money for the wedding gown. She wants to look good on her wedding photos. I mean, if I were her, I mean, I, I would be super mad. But her response, immediately she said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Whatever you want to do, God, I'm your servant. Whatever. Whatever. In, in fact, ESV version says this. And Mary said, behold, the servant of the Lord, let it be. To me, according to your word. It was, it, it, I mean, her world was falling apart. It was out of control. But her reaction was, let it be. She quoted the Beatles. <laughs> let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. There you go. That's her reaction. Let it be, God. Let it be. I mean, can't imagine to be in Mary's position. I mean, at the most she was 15. Maybe 13 or 14. Not just a social stigma, but, I mean, committing adultery, she was supposed to receive a capital punishment. She was supposed to, she was supposed to get stoned with rocks, not cannabis. It was, it was horrible. It was out of control. But we like to control everything. We like to control our spouse. The way she dresses. The way he chews. The way he drives. The way he uh, folds the laundry. My wife doesn't approve of the way I fold the laundry. I tried several times. Didn't pass QC. I, I tried, and she scolded me. You know, I tried. I mean, like, I mean, the way she does it, very neat. You know, it all, they're all in squares. It's hard. But, I mean, somebody told me that you throw your wife under the bus all the time. That's not fair. Hey, you know, I air my dirty laundry every time I preach. I mean, it seems like every single time. But, okay. I don't agree the way she loads the dishes in the dishwasher. I have my own method. I want all the, the bowls the same size, the, the plates the same size. You know, they're all together. And she's like, that's not efficient. Yes, it is. 
Because I, all I was going to do, I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab them all together and put them in the drawer. We like to be in control. We like to be in control of the kind of image, the kind of life that we want to project with people. And social media, we want, you know, I mean, it takes 50 times for you to post, for us to post a selfie. Right? I mean, you might be fighting, getting angry with, with your spouse, with your kids, and then you, you saw an Insta-worthy uh, spot. Took some pictures, posted it, hashtag blessed. <laughs> we like to be in control. I mean, the more we try to control, the more uh, we are afraid of losing control. And the more we are afraid of losing control, the more we try to control even more. I'd like to share only two thoughts this morning. The first one is this. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. And from us looking at Mary, it seems like it's easy. I mean, at this point, 2,000 years later, I mean, Mary is known as the mother of Jesus. I mean, the Virgin Mary, there's a prayer uh, dedicated to him, the Hail Mary, statutes, and cat cathedrals, right? I mean, like, it's all good. I mean, she got, like, you know, like, like, a, 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 like really, really, you know, high position just next to Jesus. It seems like Mary, you know, she is up there. But back then, it's not easy. She was just an ordinary, average teenager, 14 or 15, she had her dreams and hopes, fears. Uh, she dreamt about marriage. I mean, her option was not that many. I mean, just people in her community. I mean, she can't really snap a cute guy at youth camp. There was no dating sites like eHarmony or Match.com or Christian Tingle. I mean, Mingle. I mean, she, she just wants uh, simple things, just like any other girl, right? I mean, she wants uh, in a husband somebody who is strong, who is handsome and charming. Somebody who has a nice donkey. <laughs> newer, a newer model. Reliable, nothing fancy, nothing fancy. A good job and a bright future. Strong hands, but a soft heart. Close to mom, but not a mama's boy. And just, she just wants basic qualities. Bold, but humble. Decisive, but flexible. Lead, but don't dominate. Confident, but yet caring. Love chick flicks. Walks on the beach. Chocolate-covered strawberries. The most important thing, he has to love God. He needs to be the spiritual leader in the family. He needs to be the father of our kids. Not much, just normal stuff. Amen. You got one. And she met Mr. Wright, Joseph. Very romantic. He proposed on Jerusalem Bridge. Or maybe uh, the beach of Galilee, <laughs> surrounded by her, best, her besties and his buddies. And they plan to be married at the church, International Full Gospel of Fellowship of Jerusalem. <laughs> she had a lot of dreams, plans, having two kids, little Joey and little Mary. Maybe having Netflix and chills at least five times a week or whatever, however many. And then the angel of the Lord appeared. You're going to be with child. And she was disturbed. She was confused. Her dreams were broken. Her hope was shattered. It's out of control. And for some of you, maybe you were done with two kids and then you got a bonus. You get another one. I mean, with just the two, you didn't know how how am I going to survive with these two? Or maybe you've been trying to conceive, but it hasn't been successful. Maybe you just got laid off. 
after 30 years of service to your company, and it's been challenging to find a job. Maybe you've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Maybe this Christmas is going to be difficult because this year you just lost a, a loved one. Maybe you have some mar marital issues. Things can seem to go out of control. And Mary didn't know that 30 years later, I mean, Jesus is going to be crucified, died, but then he was resurrected, ascended into heaven. She didn't know all of that. She didn't know the ending of her story. All she knew at that time, her world was falling apart. She had to make a choice between her plans or God's purpose, her dreams or God's destiny, her desire for control or God's calling. Can't make sense of the situation, didn't understand. I want to clarify though, letting go of control of the things that we cannot control. We're not talking about, you know, not taking responsibility of ownership of the things that we are responsible for. But we need to understand there are things that we can control, things that we can do, but there are things that are outside of control. I mean, to marry just being pregnant out of wedlock, not because she was intimate with anyone, it was out of control. But she, she decided to choose to trust God. She decided to surrender. Now, when it comes to surrender, it's an interesting word because we cannot be partially surrendered. We cannot be 75% surrendered. It's 100%. Either you surrender or not. We cannot say, God, I trust you to save my soul, but I will still going to fall around. God, I, will, I, I trust you to forgive me of, of my past, but I don't trust you with my money. God, I trust you to give me peace when I'm hurting, but I don't trust you with my kids. When it comes to surrender, letting go of control, is it we are 100% or not? Now, many times our struggle to let go of control is rooted in the lack of faith. Many times we overestimate our ability to control. And in doing so, we underestimate God's power. I want to introduce the second character into the message, Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, When is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet was written, has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Now, a couple things we need to know about King Herod. He's not a royalty. He didn't get the, into the position uh, through his bloodline. He was installed by the Romans who occupied the Israel, Israel, the, Israel, the Israel land. But he was an extraordinary political survivor. When there was a civil war in Rome between Mark Anthony, uh, who had an affair with Cleopatra uh, against Octavian, um, he sided with Mark Anthony, and Mark Anthony lost. But he immediately switched side to Octavian. He's trying to convince his loyalty to Octavian and he believed him. But the Jewish people never accepted him to be a legit king. That's why he is very insecure, distrustful, and paranoid. He is brutal, he is brutal, and he is ruthless to crush potential opposition. In fact, he murdered his family members. He murdered his wife. He murdered his three sons. He murdered his other wife. And his, he murdered his 
mother-in-law. I don't blame him for that one. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. Totally kidding. Please don't tell my wife. But he was so insecure. He was so paranoid. He was trying to, to control. I mean, he, he was so afraid to lose his power, knowing that it was not his to begin with. But in doing so, verse 16 says, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. So he told the Magi, yeah, go find the king. Let me know where he is. I want to worship him as well. But that was not his intention. He wanted to kill him. But because the Magi didn't return, he ended up killing every baby in Bethlehem, two years and under. He was trying to control. He did not want to lose his position. Now, if you really think about it, Mary and Herod, they actually shared one thing in common, the arrival of baby Jesus. The arrival of baby Jesus rocked their world, messed up their plans, I mean, they're concerned about their future. Mary wanted to have a, a happy, scandalous, free life. She just wanted to marry a, a good, normal guy. And Herod, he wanted to keep his throne. The arrival of baby Jesus really just rocked their world. But they had a choice to make. I mean, Mary could have ended the pregnancy. It, it was practiced as early as 2700 BC. Uh, the Egyptians, uh, it's recorded that they start doing it in the 1550 BC. So it was available at, at that time, and Mary could have done that. But instead, she decided to, to keep the baby. She decided to trust God. But Herod, he, he wanted to kill the baby. He tried. He failed. And Mary chose to let go. Mary chose to surrender. Mary chose to say, let it be because I am your servant. I'm going to trust you. I mean, our unwillingness to surrender is rooted in our lack of faith. Because we think we know better. We think we have the ability to control over trusting the power of God. But Herod, he took matters into his own hands. I mean, Bible scholars, they, 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 they disagreed on the actual number of, of kids which were murdered. But it's between 14,000 to 144,000 babies were murdered during that time. Here's the problem. Matthew 10 verse 39 says, If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life, you will find it. When we try to control things that are outside of our control, we're going to lose it. But if you surrender your life to God, you're going to find it. King Herod, he died. His loved ones died tragically. He commanded that upon his death, random people were to be killed. And the reason was because he knew no one was going to mourn for him. But he commanded for random people to be murdered. Cannot imagine the culture of death he was practicing and promoting because he didn't want to surrender. The thing is, when we refuse to let go, when we refuse to, to surrender, there are areas in our lives, they are dead. Because no one is trustworthy enough to be the king over our lives. I mean, we, you know, King Herod has become one of the, uh, the villains in the Bible. And it's easy to hate on him. 
But actually, if we want to be honest, there is the King Herod in us. We all want to be king. We all want to be in control. We are born with the desire to be in charge. I mean, naturally, we prefer favorable outcomes in life. And that's why we like to control every situation in order to dictate most preferred outcome. And that desire travels all the way back to Adam. I mean, Adam and Eve were given some autonomy and authority to be in charge. But they were not the main people. They were still God. They were given some autonomy, but they wanted more. They didn't want to have just limited amount of authority. The problem is they didn't understand that no one is perfect, no one is good enough to have the ultimate power and control. They refuse to have that limited control, and instead, they took it, something that they thought it's theirs. And in doing so, they fell under the control of the evil one. I mean, we live in this culture where, you know what, you got to make it happen. It's up to you. you got to get in there. you got to be strong. you got to manipulate in order for you to get ahead. I mean, we are being taught that we are the master of our own fate, that we are the captains of our own souls and our own destinies. The problem is, every single one of us, we are not trustworthy enough to be a ruler. We are corrupted. We are compromised because we've been infected by sin. And because of that, we are never good enough to have the ultimate control and to have the ultimate power. You know, when a group of people historically, when they are given just this super majority in any area, in any country, in any state, they start doing ridiculous stuff, including Christians. I mean, Christianity was doing fine the first 300 years when they were persecuted. But then when they start to get a hold of power, they started to mess up. And there is human nature. When we are in control, without limit, without borders, that's when we mess up. That's why no one is completely good and perfectly good to be completely in charge, including over our lives, except for God. Because He's the only one who is good. He is the only one loving and merciful, full of grace. He cannot be bribed. He is not corruptible. He doesn't just do good. He is good. He just doesn't do good stuff, but He Himself is the embodiment of good. He is love. So he's the only one who is trustworthy to be placed and positioned as the king over our lives. He's completely benevolent. Paradoxically, that same king who owns the ultimate control and authority, he decided to give it up. He stripped himself of his throne and his crown. The Bible says that Jesus who is God, didn't take advantage of his position. He made himself nothing. Take the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Becoming obedient to death, death on the cross, and exalted to the highest place, and to him is given the name above all names, so that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And Mary, when she heard the news, she was confused and disturbed. But she decided to say, not my will, God, let your will be done. King Herod, if you notice, he was disturbed. But instead of coming to God, he wanted his will. Let my will be done. And it is the very human nature of us. But then 2,000 years ago, there was this one man who is 100% God, 100% king. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he's about to be crucified, when he's about to die. He asked God the Father, God, if it's okay, remove this cup of suffering from me. 
but not my will. Let your will be done. We don't always have the power to control, but we always have the power to surrender. And when we overestimate our ability to control, we underestimate the power of God. There are things that are outside of, outside of your control in your life. And you've been trying so hard to control it. But let me tell you that it's better for us to learn to let go, to surrender. Out of faith in God. And we're not letting go or surrendering to, for relying on other people or other things that we expect to receive in the future, but our trust is only in God. I mean, Mary, she had all her dreams, her plans, but instead she chose God's purpose, God's destiny, God's calling. What about you? What about me? Are we going to choose God, his purpose, his calling, his destiny, over our desire for control. I mean, we need to recognize. I mean, there are things that we can do, right? It is our, our, our job to, to, to work really well, to demonstrate a strong work ethic at work. But if you have been passed up for a promotion for several times, continue to trust God. He is in control. You know, I, I worked before in corporate America for 15-something years. And when I was doing good at work, when my bosses liked me, I used to think it's because I'm so awesome. But looking back, and I'm not saying this just, ah, you know, just, sound spirit, to be, just to be sound spiritual, but this is true, I believe it. God is the one who shows favor. Every promotion, every race, every increase you got at work, it is from the Lord. It is. So would you trust God? Would you trust God that he is able? He's able to, to, to make your boss to see that, wow, you're hardworking, you deserve a promotion, you deserve an increase. Maybe you've been... You've been Discipling your kids, training them in the Lord, training them to obey the word. And after doing everything you could, if he or she is not yet in the Lord, just continue to trust God. Don't try to control them. Pray for them. Let go of control. Surrender. I mean, sometimes... <clears throat> And I don't mean disrespect to uh, parents, but I mean, we, you know how we have a lot of college students, international college, college students from Indonesia. And some of the parents would come to us, the pastors, hey, um, can you please take care of her? Can you please take care of him? You know, like, like as if like they, you know, they, they, yeah, yeah, please, can you please, I mean, I mean, in other words, sometimes I feel that they want us to fix them. But I mean, if you, as the parents, cannot control them, what makes you think that we can control them? And there's one, uh, one parent who contacted us. Hey, um, my son, he goes to school, and um, he takes a philosophy as his major, now he stopped talking to us because he doesn't think that we are smart enough to engage in a discussion with him. So the parents still pay completely his tuition and his living cost here in the U.S. He didn't want to talk to them. I mean, I have all sympathy for the parents. I mean, like, if I could do something, I mean, I would talk to him, but I don't send him the money. I mean, in that case, really, I mean, like many times, I mean, we, our hands are tight. And in fact, we suggested that person, why don't you stop transferring money? 
and see if he doesn't want to talk to you. I mean, I really don't mean to, to, to just put, put down on, on these parents, but I mean, sometimes, you know, there are things after we do everything, we need to learn to trust God yes. and to pray. Same thing with your marriage. Yes. If you're going through a, a rough season, do not give up. Yes. Seek God. Surrender. Let go of control. I mean, in a moment, I, I'm going to invite Farron. She is going to play the harp, and she's going to sing, Oh, Holy Night. But I want you to ponder on this one question as we, as we listen to this song. What is it that you want to control that God wants you to surrender? What is it that you want to control that God wants you to surrender? You can put it in a piece of paper or if you have your smartphone, you can just type it up. But let's take this moment. We all want to be the king of our own lives. But we are not good enough. We are not trustworthy enough to have the unlimited power and control. There's only one king. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And the chorus of this song says, fall on your knees. Fall on your knees. Would you fall on your knees? There is anything that you would like to control, any area in your life. Let's learn from the Word of God. Let's say, let it be, God. I am your servant. I am your servant. Let it be done according to your will. Let it be done according to your promises. You know why? Because He is good. I mean, the Bible says, he did not spare His own Son. Wouldn't He give us everything else that we need in Jesus? I mean, if He gave His most precious Son, wouldn't He give us everything else that we need? Would you trust Him? Would you let go of, of that throne in your, in your life? And give it to the rightful owner. His name is Jesus. His name is not Conrad. His name is not Steffi. His name is not Bruce. His name is Jesus. We are not perfect. We are corrupted and compromised because of sin. The best person to be in charge in my life, in your life, is Jesus. What a stark contrast between Mary and King Herod. But most importantly, the king himself has demonstrated a great example of how he let go. He let go of heaven. He let go of his throne. He let go of his crown in order for him to give us that freedom, that new life. That we can now walk in the newness of life. Not only we're going to have eternal life with Jesus, but we, here on earth, we can walk in this newness of life. Just get rid of all desires to be in control. It is causing us anxiety. Our blood pressure to go up. Just let God. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your head? Father, we, we want to acknowledge that we are not the kings over our lives. You're the sent one 2,000 years ago, and His name is Jesus. And this morning, God, as we, as we ponder, as we reflect on the message that we just heard, Speak to us. Show us if there is any area in our lives where we need to, to bow down and to let go. Let go of control, surrender control. 
over those particular areas knowing that the ultimate control and power and authority belongs to you. Thank you, God. It is our declaration this morning. We want to fall on our knees. Just like the Magi, we are here on earth to worship you.